Uh, we're really watching that weather forecast as uh, folks in uh, Meadville get ready for the Thurston Classic tonight, tomorrow, and into the weekend. Uh, we'll keep you posted on those uh, uh, updates as we get them. Uh, joining us uh, this morning from the Greater Titusville Development Foundation, we have Mr. Jim Becker and Mr. Terry Funk. Good morning, guys. How are you? Morning, Luke. Good morning. Welcome to the program. Two guys uh, who grew up with the philosophy, we're all winners. Everybody's a winner. Not exactly. (laughs) (laughs) Still trying to become a winner just once. Just once. Just once. Uh, Showing up here was your first mistake. That's right. (laughs) That's right. Uh, A lot to get to. uh, But first, I got to say congratulations. Uh, You know, every year it's such a a fun challenge to go out to the golf course and and take part. And, And deep down, for somebody like me, you say, I'm here because it helps the chamber. Then there's the Jim Becker philosophy. We're here to win. <laughs> and that would be the first time we even came close. <laughs> we, we were shocked, actually. Normally the winner out there is 15 under. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, we weren't there. You know, we, we finished 12 under. I mean, Casey Neely sank like a 50-foot putt on the last hole. <laughs> it was crazy. Sure. It was good. The key to winning there is picking great teammates. Well, you know, after hearing <laughs> after hearing your score, I thought, well, we all kind of got together and said, you know, next year we could cheat a little bit more. There's room to cheat there. We were. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> it was it was a fun day. It really was. It was it was nice uh, nice to get out. But uh, you guys have been working hard, not just at the the foundation, but with redevelopment. There's a lot going on. Um, this news coming out, which is fantastic. Uh, so let's talk a little bit about the big news you guys have today. Well, the, the, the foundation is has been approached by um, a donor who wants to um, be involved <coughs> helping the community move forward and, and, and dress up the community a little bit. We have been, uh, this is one of the reasons the foundation was created, was to allow potential donors to, to truly take a look at projects in town that they might be interested in and, and they might be interested in funding and give them a vehicle and an opportunity to, to help out their town. Um, so we partnered with this um, with, with this donor who quite frankly wants to remain nameless and uh, to create a true facade improvement program for the downtown district. So it's a literally a one for one match. It's for every wow. dollar that the business owner or building owner puts into the to their facility into their building, uh, this donor will match that dollar up to five thousand dollars. Wow! Yeah, yeah. There's been a program in the past uh, run through Renaissance. It's the old Main Street program that had a facade program, but it um, it was not a grant program. It was actually partnered with the Titusville Industrial Fund, and it was a low interest loan. And there was not a lot of interest in that uh, and for a variety of reasons. And um, this truly now is, is, we hope, will serve as an incentive for, for some uh, property owners to, to invest a little time and money in their in their building and, and help dress up the downtown. So, Terry, I guess what you guys are saying, this is a grant. It's not a loan. Right. It is a grant. And really, we'll match you dollar for dollar, right up to $5,000. So uh, we're hoping the fact that it is a grant has a lot of people excited and you, that they'll use it. Yeah, uh, you've been with the, the school district, uh, how long were you in, as a teacher and administrator? 34 years. 34 years. You retired a year ago. Two years ago. Two years ago. Two years? Yeah, two years. Oh, my gosh. Your wife just retired. You've been very dedicated to this community. You were an outsider, and you came in, and you fell in love with this community. You know, we always say, uh, Dancy and I, if if you talk to us, we always said, well, we came here with the idea we were going to stay for three years, and now it's been 36. Uh, (laughs) And uh, we love the town, love the community. I think that's one of the great things about the town is the fervor and the passion that people have for Titusville that live in Titusville. And it doesn't surprise me that we would get an anonymous donor who would do this, uh, which is absolutely wonderful, because we have people that are outside of Titusville that no longer live in Titusville that still make donations and things. And I I think that's the great thing about this town, that the people that are in this town, uh, you know, they realize that they got to give back, and it's a responsibility of all of us to give back a little bit to the town. So to you, it's important that the look of the town is held to a high standard. Absolutely, Luke. Think of the wonderful things we have. I mean, when you think of the trails, the natural resources, Drake Well, the things that we have to offer is a town that pull people in. But once they get here, 
we've got to be a great looking town to keep them here and to keep them coming back. So I, I think that, and, and particularly the facade of a building says a lot about a building and its attractiveness and its ability to draw you in. And that's what we're hoping that this project will do, that it'll just uh, make the front of the downtown look a little nicer. I, I always go back to the idea, you never stay the same. You either get better or you get worse. Or you turn into Mark. <laughs> 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 Who's a winner? Well, Who's a winner? The stuff okay. I put up with. Right? <laughs> For the sake of argument this morning. Okay. <laughs> but but I think, Luke, you know, you're back to that idea that if you don't do a little sprucing up, if, and that's what's great about this, you know, it, it doesn't have to be $5,000. It can be a couple thousand dollars. And a, a couple a hundred dollars. Paint and it, some landscaping. It's funny you mention that. A couple of years ago, uh, we took the family to uh, New York City, and we stayed around uh, Nyack, and... Um, we were we were walking downtown and it was just so beautiful. So we were talking to a guy in a restaurant. He said, "Why the whole town looks like it's brand new?" And he said, "Yeah, about a year ago, uh, the local government said, hey, we're going to put X amount of money into a pot, and every business in town is going to get either a fresh coat of paint, new signage, or whatever.' Now they had the money to do that, but the whole town looked amazing. Right. So it wasn't just, oh, this building looks nice. The whole town." So it sounds like with something like this, if you have a building in town, here's an opportunity to maybe look at a fresh coat of paint or signage or, so, or something. Yep, that's the, that's the full intent. And we understand it's a small pot of money to begin with, but um, we have to start somewhere and, and we'll get this moving, get it moving forward. We hope that uh, this may also spark some other potential donors who want, who want to help fund a, you know, an increased fund for, for the facades. But uh, as you both have said, having a spruced up town, even if it's a couple buildings at a time as we as we get this rolled out, I think it'll make a difference. Over the long haul, definitely make a difference. So what are the challenges? I mean, if somebody says, boy, what color? How's this look? I mean, who we manages We try to keep the, the process as simple as we could look. And it's really a relatively simple process. If they pick up the application, basically show us a little bit of, you know, we have the money to match a dollar for dollar. This is our plan. This is what we want to do. And then it just basically goes to the foundation board. And we will help also. We have the ability to help them with the design and the construction and those types of things, uh, you know, overseeing it for them. Absolutely. It's, it's, there's a Department of Interior standards that are out there for historic places. Um, we, we use that as a guideline. Um, it, we don't necessarily have a historic um, district, if you will. We, we have a designated area, but we do not have the guidelines in place for code enforcement and things like that. Um, but the intent here is to keep the historic theme of, of the community, um, some kind of Southwest motif in the middle of downtown historic Titusville is probably not what we're looking for. <laughs> but, well. uh, I mean, other than your place, right? So, but it's a you know it's an opportunity again that we can we, we're we're able to help. We have the staff to be able to to help. The board is fully engaged, uh, and the application process really is not that difficult. Uh, we, as Terry said, we try to simplify as much as possible. Um, there, you know, uh, the proof that the contractor knows what they're doing. So we have a known contractor, you know, that that we can sit down and talk with and find out how the, their, what their thought process is, is on the renovation or the painting. It strikes me as that this would be an easy sell uh, for someone. Uh, I recall several years ago when the Main Street program took off in Oil City, uh, they have an active facade program mm -hmm. there, a facade improvement program there, and there were naysayers and continue to be naysayers there that, you know, that say that eventually yes there is public taxpayer money being drawn into this and why do we use taxpayer money you know when we need other things like jobs and what have you and this is that's why I'm saying this is an easy sell because mm -hmm. this is a private donor right uh, who's doing this out of apparently the goodness of you know civic pride to right. take care of this yep, absolutely yeah. someone that cares about our town and wants our town to look better well and the other thing mark is when you cover franklin events i mean they've got the harb and that's a very controlled situation where right. somebody is you know it's going to look like this and it's going to be this color and it's going to i mean down to a t now you don't want somebody to come in and you know paint a building pink i would imagine correct so yeah. i mean I, I would there there is still some guidelines yeah. with that well i imagine common sense is going right. to enter into this right. at some point. Well, there is some well. oversight <laughs> I, I, I mean from the foundation board but yeah. 
But I, I think, Luke, we've tried to make it as simple as possible for people, and, and we don't want to scare anyone off. Uh, you know, if you want to improve your business and improve the way the business looks on the outside, you've got a real opportunity here. All right, so Jim, you mentioned, you know, a fresh coat of paint. What are some other things that folks could look into maybe doing to their building? Pretty much anything on the exterior. Uh, other than, I mean, we're not looking to acquire property. We're not looking to completely rebuild, um, you know, a structure. But facade work, uh, replacing missing historic pieces like cornices and things like that <coughs> across the, some of these historic buildings. Um, you know, a fresh coat of paint, windows, sidewalks, you know, th things like that that truly... Um, affect the look of the building. We're not looking to do uh, standard maintenance and upkeep that that you know that should have been or could be accomplished by the by the building owner, but uh, things like that that will truly dress it up. Awnings, I saw one Awnings, on the list yep, too. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and those are pretty hard to maintain after a while. That they they will go they, with they some wear and tear after a yeah, while. Yeah, but it's amazing when you look at like the old photographs oh, yeah. of yeah. this community, and awnings were just everywhere and, and awnings goodness. can have an immediate impact and they do they yeah. they really do yeah. they make can dress effect. something up yeah. and, and have a nice effect very quickly absolutely i well and i always thought you guys should have had them around uh, the canoe because when i would walk by you would be at the out your window in your office, Jim, throwing things at me. Well, that was just you. <laughs> and I, I felt if there was an awning, I'd be protected. Yeah. yeah. We're talking point. about awnings, Luke, not shoulders. Oh, okay. so. <laughs> so there's an awful lot that can be done Absolutely. with the money. How do you keep somebody from, from saying, boy, you know, I really only need this, but there's this much available. Maybe I should go for more. I mean, well, this is this has to be managed well. Yeah, well, that's our intent. You know, that's kind of our role in this. The the foundation staff and the board will, will oversee the you know, oversee the process, look at the applications, talk with the building and business owners, talk with the contractor. You know, your 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 cousin Billy is probably not the best one to do the work. You know, we're we're looking for a you know a contractor that knows what they're doing and has some experience, and um, that will be part of the process. So uh, a couple things come to mind here. One, um, a couple years ago, Titusville got new lighting downtown, and it really changed the look of, of the community. Meadville's going through the same thing. The lighting down in Meadville is amazing. It, More coming this fall, by the way. Really? Already been awarded. That's excellent. Yeah. So you wouldn't think, you know, lighting or new street posts are going to change the look of a town, but it really just makes it look so much more beautiful and, and elegant. Um, we're, we're talking little changes, paint, awnings, little things that could really change the look of a community. No question. And I think the great thing is a lot of times, Luke, that if one business takes the step forward to do that, the business on, on either side look and say, well, well, wait a minute, you know, this person has stepped up their game and now yeah, we're looking right. a little shabby here. So we need to do that as well. So hopefully it'll, it'll gain some momentum and it will... Uh, It'll move through the community in a positive way. All right, deadlines. Uh, this first round, what we're gonna do is uh, accept applications through the 31st of July. Uh, it's a Friday. Uh, it gives about six weeks to get things together. Uh, we'll take it to the board at the beginning of August, but then we'll start having the conversations. Um, see how many applications we get, see what the dollar amounts are, you know, and then make some decisions from there. But you know, reach out and get the application just as quickly as possible. Uh, you can get that through either at the Titusville Redevelopment Authority office down at Opportunity Park in Building 4. You can also get it off on online at, uh, at our website, <coughs> TitusvilleFoundation.org, or you can email uh, grants at TitusvilleFoundation.org, and that uh, will be able to get uh, an application sent out to you with the guidelines and everything that's that's been established. So if somebody's looking to, to have this work done by Oil Fest, is that possible or is it going to take some time to award the grants? Yeah, but yeah, the deadline's the 31st of July. So Okay, uh, so yeah, no. Right. You know, yeah, that's, that, this go-around will be tight. Um, uh, but that gives them time to get things prepped for the fall? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yep. Time for homecoming. Yep. Excellent. There you Good go. Good thinking. Yeah. That's right. Because that's, that's what it's about. <laughs> because we go from Warrior Festival to Homecoming. So, <laughs> right. so, so it'll be ready for Homecoming. 
<laughs> That's perfect. Uh, talk about uh, the donor's uh, donation, and that qualifies as a, a charitable contribution? Absolutely. Tax-deductible donation. We, we issue out the tax, the, 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 the tax form for them. Um, it's, this foundation has turned into um, even a little more than what we had expected, I think, going in. Uh, when you start talking about the projects that can be accomplished, you start talking about the ability to, to provide local match. Uh, for when, when it grants that, that are out there that we're working on for other projects and then like this an example like this where an individual can uh, You know literally approach us <laughs> and say say you know, this is something that you know, we could we could work on we've been talking with this individual for months a couple months uh, and Bill, he's, this person was involved with the guidelines. You know, oh, wow. Yeah, we, we pushed the guidelines by them and said, you know, what do you think? Any, any other things that you'd like to see in here? Uh, and it, it was a good process. And it, it, the guidelines that were engaged previously with some other facade programs, we incorporated things like that in. So it, it wasn't just shooting from the hip. But uh, yeah, all in all, I think it's gone through a pretty extensive uh, initiation, if you will, to get it up and ready to go, and we're excited to get this kicked off. It sounds like a pretty neat uh, compromise between the way things are set up in a lot of different areas here in the area. Luke mentioned the um, the harb down in, in Franklin that right. pretty tightly controls how things are uh, put together in an effort like you're putting here uh, and other places like Main Street that uh, put together like a, a yearly round of, of uh, loans and what have you. This seems like a, a, a terrific middle road. We hope so. Uh, we're, we're, a lot of thought and time went into this trying to, to get it figured out and, and what, what might be the best approach. I mean, you know, maybe the next round we, we make some other minor tweaks because of things we find you know, through this initial process. So, you know, we're trying to do what we can to make this as easy as possible, like Terry said earlier. When does round two happen? Is this like every six months, every year? We're hoping to do it every six months, but uh, with with the winters, we'll have to we'll have to see course, how it plays out. Right. But um, we're really seeing how this first one goes. See what kind of interest we have. Um, number of applicants could help truly determine, you know, uh, the need of additional donors. Well, you know, the thing is, I was just thinking when I was reading the fact sheet on this, if somebody came up with $5,000 on their own and you matched it with another 5000 that's a lot of exterior work oh, yeah. that could be done yeah. in a building. Absolutely. Yeah. That has the potential for a lot of improvement. Yeah. We agree. We agree. Uh, Terry, uh, what's next for the foundation? It's been a just a terrific start. I mean, the, the community support has been amazing. Well, I think that's what's exciting for us, Luke, is that this program is exactly what those of us on the foundation board envision that we should be doing. And these are the types of things. What's next? I don't know what's going to come out of the woodwork. You know, we, as Jim said, uh, you know. This well, hopefully per- nothing if they can get it fixed. Right. They can, whatever does come out of the woodwork, we can probably paint it and fix it up. Uh, but... Um, <laughs> but I think that's what's exciting about the foundation. It gives people in the community who have said, oh, gee, I've always wanted to see this happen in our community. Now they have an avenue to do that. And it gives them a place to come and say, yeah, we, we share your vision. So anybody that has an idea on how can, how can we make Titusville look better? How can we do this right? Uh, you know, I, I think it now gives them a conduit to to kind of accomplish uh, what they hope to do as well. And we have an application in right now awaiting state funding and approval. It's already been reviewed for the Fleming Park plan, the one that's been been out there. Uh, we do have a match, uh, a, a donation piece that was put in uh, through the foundation that's serving as the local match um, from, from the Fleming Foundation. Um, and that's literally Paid the entire local match wow. for that grant. If, we, if we're fortunate enough to get the grant, so, but that that project's moving forward. It's all been designed and drawn, um, so we're we're hopeful that we'll hear something good about that in the fall, uh, so we can start into that process by homecoming. It, well, <laughs> <laughs> we want to get through far, the farmers right. market play out and everything else. So um, hopefully it'll be late fall. Get some of the work done if if we're successful with the grant, and then into the spring finish it off. That's so, fantastic. Yeah, it's good stuff. Well, good work, guys, and uh, congratulations on this. This is just uh, terrific. And again, contact the foundation to get details or to uh, just schedule an appointment and sit down and go through the process. Uh, Thanks for having us on. Larry. Before we wrap things up, I got to ask you real quick. Uh, it was just announced that uh, athletic director Jim comes retiring. Jim, you're a coach. Uh, Terry, you are retired. What advice would you have for uh, Jim Come? 
Because he, he's got to be well, doing first something. First of all, i got to tell you this. Jim Cum has been a tremendous athletic director. Uh, you know, I, I, I can't say enough for the job that Jim has done. And I don't know that people understand the, the knowledge base that Jim has in a, as an athletic director. Luke, if I can just take a minute. My son who lives in Girard, uh, they joke uh, because if Jim needs to know anything, about anything that's going on in the PIAA, his first call is to Jim Come always, and uh, Jim still helps him out. And uh, I, I know Jim's just been a tremendous, done a tremendous job for the school district, and is it's a tremendous resource on athletics. Uh, knowing Jim Come, uh, someone was referred to earlier as Tigger this morning. <laughs> uh, I think Jim's going to stay pretty busy, and, and and I still think you're going to see Jim around town, and, and he's going to be a pretty busy guy. Yeah. I don't see Jim sitting at the kitchen table for five, six hours in the morning doing nothing. <laughs> no. The papers. I, that's, I, right. I, uh, that's right. Hey, guys, thank you so much. Congratulations again. Thanks, Lou. All right, time for news. This is the Morning Drill on Stream Television and the Allegheny News Talk Sports Network.